So believe it or not, but I actually had time today to work on my own trading. For you guys that don't know me, I'm a trading coach. So a lot of my time is spent working with other traders, you know, helping them get on the path to ultimately becoming consistently profitable traders, independent, consistently profitable traders. And very rarely do I have time to really work on myself as a trader. And that's not a bad thing. That comes with the territory. Um, I understand that. But it was a pleasant surprise to have a few hours to really start putting into work on a new strategy that I've been working on. And when I say a new strategy, it's it's nothing new and groundbreaking. There's there's rarely anything that's new in trading anymore. But it's a, a classic strategy, more of a higher time frame, check your chart once a day type strategy that I wanted to implement in my trading. Um, I do a lot of swing trading. I, I do a lot of day trading. But um, the last piece of the puzzle for me is either getting back into investments or doing more of a, a longer term approach. Uh, I'm, I'm always looking for diversification in my trading. That's the, the key to investments is to diversify. Um, but anyway, I was going through the backtesting process and before I actually go into backtesting, I do kind of a, a pre-backtesting process where I'm still developing the rules and, and uh, the rules and the regulations for the strategy. So I have a, a broad idea of what I'm looking for. I have a broad idea on how I want to take targets and stops. Um, and what I do is essentially I, I do an eye test. So I scroll through the charts. I go from, you know, click right, click right, click right, look at the opportunities and take notes on what the market is doing. And then that allows me to get more details about, hey, I want to take targets here, at least initially, or hey, I probably want to use this type of method for a stop loss. And then I roll through it again. I keep evaluating and evaluating and adding and adding and adding until I eventually have the first set of uh, strict rules for the system. So I was doing the eye test this morning and I did about 45 trades. That's all I had time for. And I had about 25 winners and 20 losers. So that's about 55%. And it brought me back to a time in, in my trading career where 55% would have been something that I just crumbled up the paper and threw away saying, there's no way you can be a profitable trader only winning 55% of the time. You know, everyone on the internet is telling you, you've got to be a 70% trader, 80% trader. You got to win every single trade, no losses, right? 100% accuracy. Um, and like many of you guys out there, I used to buy into that because I was young, I was naive. I didn't know any better. And, you know, I would easily throw away a very, very good strategy just because the win percentage was low. And, Obviously, as I've gotten more experience with trading, I've been trading for 10 years now, right? Historically, I'm about a 55% trader. So I know firsthand on how profitable you can be with what some may consider a low win percentage. Industry standard, I, I'll tell you what, most professional traders are somewhere between 60 and 40. So it's, it's kind of in the normal. But again, what you hear here on YouTube or Twitter or whatnot is typically not what's actually happening in real life. But... Anyway, the win percentage isn't that important, guys. That's what I came here to tell you today. It's not really the win percentage. It's really all the variables around it. Now, if I'm, if I'm a 55% trader, right, let's just call me a 50% trader and I'm winning one out of every two trades I take, right? So if each of those trades, if I'm trading with uh, an average one-to-one -one risk reward, you can do the math. Obviously, I'm going to be exactly at break even. Well, what if I trade with an average two to one risk reward. Well, now that 50% win percentage ends up being profitable because each time I win, I gain two. Each time I lose, I give back one. And then what if I made that average risk reward three to one, right? You see where I'm going here? You don't really have to change the win percentage to build more profit in your system. But when you tweak around with getting more from your wins and losing less from your losses, that's how you can really take a strategy or a system with what some may consider a low win percentage and make the expectancy very, 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 very positive. And, you know, those are the first thoughts that come to my mind now. Again, in, in just doing some reflection in the past, the first thoughts would have been, doesn't win enough, throw it away. Now, right, my view is a little bit different. It's okay, well, let's see how much I can win. What is my maximum favorable excursion? What is my maximum adverse excursion? Let's get those losses as small as possible. Let's get those wins as big as possible. And let's just destroy the markets with a 55% winning system. So food for thought out there. I'd love to hear your thoughts below, especially if you've had this kind of um, 
paradigm shift where you thought one way at one point and then another way at another point. I'd love to hear your experiences with that. I think it's a good idea for newer traders to read below um, that experience as well. So if you have it, share it. Or of course, if you think otherwise, you know, share that as well. I'm not against you sharing your opinion just because it's against mine. Trust me, I'm a trader. That's all we do is what we trade the markets, which is the difference in opinion. I just ask that you be polite. Don't yell and bash because then I'm going to give you a smart answer that says, okay, cool. But if you actually involve an intelligent conversation, I'd love to have it with you. So let me know. I'll see you guys with the next episode of The Trading Blog. And until then, play your trade, trade your plan. Take care.